Hi, this is Brian Hyde with Loving Liberty, and we're at FeeCon in Atlanta. And just I have I have an opportunity here to talk to so many incredible individuals. And right now I'm with Dr. Wolf von Lahr, who is with uh, it's Students for. For Liberty, I'm going to look at your card here. Students for Liberty, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Tell me what brings you to uh, this conference. I'm a fee alumnus, so I've been touched by the organization and I've learned many of the ideas through it. But I'm the CEO of Students for Liberty, and we are defending the ideas free markets, free speech on campuses on the United States, but all across the world. We are in over 100 countries, and our students are very active every day to fight socialism and this really uh, is so important to me personally because I used to be a volunteer myself. To give you an idea about the size of the organization, we have staff members on four continents, 55 staff members and uh, we're working together with over 2,000 volunteers that have a reach, not only reach, but that have organized events talking about these ideas that we're talking about here with over 65,000 people and uh, that's what we do. It's so interesting that uh, higher education used to be synonymous with, with that's where a person would go to uh, to be exposed to new ideas and to enlarge their thinking and you know see the world in new ways, and yet uh, lately it seems like there there's a trend to to try to stifle free thinking in in some campuses. Do do you run into, for instance, free speech issues at some of the very campuses where your group is is active? Absolutely. Before I go into the details on that. Uh, what, when I'm thinking, maybe your audience is thinking about universities, a couple of images come to mind. One is students wearing Che Guevara, the murderous socialists on their chest as this something would be to be proud of, hailing an ideology that has killed hundreds of millions of people. Then I see students um, having signs up in the air that their feelings are more important than the First Amendment and free speech. And I see graduates coming out of universities with an accumulated $1.5 trillion in debt, but often not many skills to show for. And we at Students for Liberty, we are tackling that head on because our students are not only talking about the ideas and have read Mises, Hayek, Rand, the Founding Fathers, but they're also spreading it. I've alluded to the 65,000 attendees that we had. Most of these events that we had, the students are in charge of. So it's about theory and the experience. And so we are the, where the universities are failing, we are stepping in and try to give students a different perspective. And it's needed because our students have been harassed and not only by other fellow students, but also by campus police. One of my colleagues now, she was a student at a small college in, in Texas. Nicole is her name. And she was handing out material to have a discussion on the Second Amendment, pro-gun. And she was then approached by campus police and by administrators saying that this is not a dedicated free speech zone. Can you imagine? Wow. In the land of the free? And uh, she was like, she said like, no, this is, this is a free country. I will continue to pass this on. And she was then like basically detained. But she didn't let that sit. So she, um, like you, spoke about this in the media and recorded videos and it went viral. And then she used another organization, the FIRE, it's called, to sue that university and she won. I, I'm just speechless, and, and no pun intended, to, to hear how difficult it is for, for people to just to simply share ideas. I mean, it, it's one thing to be doing a violent protest or, you know, burning, you know, trash or throwing bottles or something. But we're talking about students simply sharing an idea peacefully, and, and they're being told that if you're not in a designated free speech zone, you can't do that. Absolutely, and we had like other students handing out material about the very high incarceration rate in this country, trying to inform and have informed debate. And because we are more conservatarian, conservative libertarian, like some leftist students then started to spit at my, at my student. And uh, that's, that's unfortunately only happening in extreme cases, but sometimes it can be really, really bad. And we need organizations like the Foundation for Economic Education and Students for Liberty to fight against this, to have like an alternative narrative, because... Brian, what's the alternative? People coming out of university maybe become entrepreneurs and just see that government is the solution. They ask for government handouts, they want more regulation, or you have like a bunch of people who just want to become a bureaucrat, or they become teachers at our schools and then only know that government is the solution to social problems. They're not thinking about churches or civil society or what you, the work that you are doing and other nonprofits. And we have to change that mindset and show that this country and the, the West in general became rich because of capitalism, freedom, and people making choices in the marketplace. I think one of the key differences between 
the students you're describing, your students, and, and the, the reading material, von Mises and Hayek and, and um, Hazlitt, you know, I would guess that uh, some of the student activists, the ones who are trying to shut down free speech, the ones who need to retreat to, to safe spaces and who are coming out of, uh, you know, their higher education with, with very little um, ability to add value to society, I'm guessing they probably haven't read those authors. Why is it important that people tackle books or ideas, um, reading that, that is difficult, maybe even above their head? Yeah. I'm a bookworm. I love to read these thinkers and I really enjoy that. But I realize not everybody is like that. And I don't think everybody has to go through von Mises' human action, which is like this thick. Um, I've done that. I enjoy that. But I understand that not everybody does it. And books and education is important and we have to be able to defend the ideas very well. However, I don't think that everybody has to read all of these books, but to just get a sense of the beauty of free markets and what they accomplish, I think that's easy. And a book like book like this, iPencil, is a wonderful example of this. Because very often we as free market principle thinkers, we get bogged down and complain about this regulation, about the minimum wage or what, like, what stupid thing the administration has done now. And it's okay to point that out and try to tackle it. But we have to instill in others the beauty of the ideas like you go into a supermarket and look around you you see all of these different goods and services think about the thousands of hundreds of thousands of people that work together because of the price system to get it there like why can I take a tomato soup from the shelf eat it and don't die like that's a miracle and and trying to instill this this fascination and and explaining that this is because of property rights and free markets and and this sort of thing I don't think one needs to read all of this. It helps, but one doesn't need to. But spreading these ideas and having a positive spin about that invites more people to engage with that. If we are all the time like grumpy and like saying everything is bad, that ignores like how much further the world has um, come because of these uh, things like the rule of law, free speech, and free markets. I think you just nailed one of the big differences between the people who are um, excited and, and recognize, you know, the, uh, the illustration of the supermarket is just perfect to illustrate how, um, how a free market helps us all. And I think the difference between the people who actually get that and the people who are out protesting about everything and looking for reasons to be offended comes down to gratitude. And, and we, we become very ungrateful in some ways. I like that a lot. And for me, it's, it's gratitude, but also victimization. And both the left and the right is doing that. Because nowadays you see the right saying like, oh, Facebook and, and Google is like censoring the internet and don't allow our content to get out. Yes, you should be concerned about that, but don't look to the government for solutions. Like don't play yourself like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a Republican, I'm conservative, I'm the victim here. No, we have the better ideas, but we also have to be the better people too. And that looking for other solutions, trying to come up with a different product that, that maybe is like a watchdog organization and can point like these things out um, and trying to have like an alternative. But right now the left on campus says like because I'm a, like this kind of individual in this group, I'm marginalized and therefore I'm a victim and people like to be victims. But we need to be stronger than that and say like this is the way forward and, and show how a free society not only free markets, but also institutions like churches and, and nonprofits like yours can really make a difference. And that's what is Students for Liberty is also about, because that's what we're instilling in the students. Because for most of my life, Brian, I didn't think I could produce much value. I didn't have trust in my abilities and I was doubting myself a lot. But thanks to Students for Liberty and the training and the framework, they've showed me that I can lead a European movement of students, work with brilliant people together and make a difference, organize events with 300 people, do the marketing, do the logistics, getting sponsors in. And I realized, oh, I'm actually not that useless after all. And it, that's a very personal experience for me. And I want millions of students to have the same experience. And that's why we're working very hard to make this possible on campuses. Dr. Wolf von Lahr, I am so glad we had this opportunity to visit. Tell everybody where they can go if they want to learn more about Students for Liberty. Certainly. Uh, that's uh, www.studentsforliberty.org. And we also have an event in January on the Martin Luther King weekend where we will have 1,300 people, our supporters, sponsors, organizations like yours, but also many students from this country and around the world that fight for these ideas. So check it out. Okay. I hope we get a chance to visit again. We will be back with some more exciting interviews and introduce you to some more wonderful people here at FeeCon in just a little bit.